Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Series with Kevin, where we add value to people's lives happening every day at 12 on ebuzzradio.com. Today, with our lunchtime career segment, we are we've got Giselle Rencher from RecruiterG.co.za from, uh, with us. Giselle, how are you doing? Good, thanks for yourself, Kevin. Cool, man. Thank you for joining us today. Don't you want to tell um, the audience more about you and more about what it is you do? Sure. Uh, Kevin, I am a recruitment expert. I work specifically in the engineering field, but I also work in general other fields or other industries out there. And um, yeah, it's been a passion of mine for quite a few years to help companies find the right talent and make sure that they are investing in the right people, but also help people ensure that they're investing in their careers properly. Yeah, I, you know, I think um, touching on this, and that's why, you know, I wanted to have this conversation. There was, uh, you know, I've seen in the last year, so many people going through so many changes and so many things that, um, that have really put them back in a very difficult situation. And people out there are, are really starting to question, you know, themselves around what they're doing, if they want to be in the environments that they're in, um, is this the job for me? You know, all of these questions based on the fact that COVID has been what it's been. You know, it's it's a scary thing and it's a scary place. Um, and I think a lot of people are starting to to wanting to, you know, f find solutions and and find the jobs that they really love doing. Um, and you know it's a bit it's a big kind of question but one of the questions that we have uh, uh, we have to to kick off today's conversation is there's there's a huge misconce uh, misconception of what recruiters actually do what are the roles of recruiters don't you want to start off with that sure so recruiters their main job or main goal is to assist companies in finding the right talent so yes, they help uh, individuals find a position or find a new career, but only if what they're doing is in line with that person. So for instance, like I said, I work mainly in the engineering field. I do venture out into other industries, but if you're from an education background, I as a recruiter wouldn't be able to help you because I don't have the connections in that industry, so to say. Yeah. Where, um, you do get other recruiters who are very seldom and more in the IT space where they actually will first will, will help IT professionals find a position. But 99.9% .9 of recruiters out there are out there to help um, align the talent strategies of companies and ensure that the companies have the right staff. So, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm just thinking, why is that? So why, why um, uh, is it, is it purely based on the fact that from a, from a business perspective as a recruiter, that you kind of specialize in engineering and that's, you know, that's where you work best in, um, why not just be a generalist? So just to give guys out there a bit of clarity. Mm -hmm. So they have to find, if you're looking for a recruiter, you, you also, as the, the, as the person looking for work, you also have to know who to speak to and what the right recruitment agency for you is, right? Yes, exactly. So from a business perspective, it is, um, you get a lot of generalist recruiters out there and they're usually the junior recruiters that and eventually a senior recruiter will eventually um, specialize in an area. The biggest reason is you develop the, the network and the connections in that area, but also you develop that the knowledge of what your clients need. So if I had to have the knowledge of every single type of industry and every single client, um, yeah, that's going to take me a few years to become an expert in that. <laughs> um, it takes what it takes ten thousand hours to become an expert in anything. Yeah. So. Same with any other recruiter. It, take, it takes you time to know the industry, to know what they're looking for, and to speed up the process, because that's also why companies go to recruiters. It is purely to help speed up their process and then get the right staff in as quick as possible. So that is the biggest reason that they specialize, but it's also um, not a set in stone thing. A lot of recruiters do generalize. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> To our questions that we with, with, that we have today, um, how can job seekers best equip themselves to find a job in today's 
current job market. Um, do you have some insights on, on what are the, the quickest steps to be taken here? Yeah, so I'm going to hop on to a little bit of what you said earlier. With COVID, everyone's wondering or changing their career, so to say, and finding new passions. So the first thing I would say is make sure you know what you want to do. If you were in catering, for instance, or hospitality, and you feel that you want to now change your career, are you changing your career because the hospitality industry has taken such a huge knock and you're scared it's not going to recover, but your passion still lies there? Or are you changing career because you're really bored and you have found a new passion? So it's really having that internal conversation with yourself and saying, what is it that I want to do? Why am I making this change? And is this change going to be worth it? Yeah. And what's the next step? I think also you need to value your skills. And in this time that you are looking, also cons consistently upskill yourself. So do Udemy courses, do LinkedIn courses, read an ex a book or whatever, just constantly upskill yourself so that when you're going in, it doesn't look like you're sitting back at home doing nothing. It show, that shows that, um, what's the word, that initiative that you wanted to go out and actually do something while you were waiting to find the right thing. And networking is the most important, I think. You never know who you're going to speak to. I mean, you could speak to Joe Soap in the shopping line, and he might know someone who is looking for someone with your skill set. Um, so just constantly network, network with people on LinkedIn, Facebook, obviously be safe when, when you're doing this, but um, constantly network and make sure that this is the most crucial one. Your contact details on your CV are correct and up to date and that people can get hold of you if they see your CV. Because I think that is the biggest gripe at the moment is recruiters or hiring managers can't get hold of people that they think have the skills. <laughs> I, I laugh because I think, you know, like uh, generally you would think, okay, well, that's the first port of call. Uh, and I've also, you know, I've made mistakes like that where, you know, you put information out and you kind of go, oh dear, this, you know, the link that someone's clicking on or the, the contact details that are there is, you know, one digit missing or it's going to the wrong place. And so, I mean, as much as that sounds like an obvious thing to do, I think a lot of people forget that. They do. And um, or they'll have one digit that's wrong because they haven't checked it yeah and um and, and you know recruiters and hiring managers they are stalkers and they will find a way to get hold of you but if you make it it's more simple for them it's it help, increases your chances as well because you won't always get that recruiter or hiring manager that is going to go above and beyond but in saying that if you are in the job market also keep up to date with your social media inboxes. Make sure that you check them regularly. See if there are any requests in there that you might have missed because if your contact details are wrong, that is definitely the go-to place. So, I mean, just a random thing that sort of comes to mind now as well is how effective or how useful is it to, to create a, a sort of an online CV? So like a, just a clickable thing that takes you to a website, for example, like a one pager that says, hey, this is me and um, this is who I am and maybe posting a short little video. Is that is that a useful strategy to to share with, with recruiters? Yeah, it, it definitely is. If you've got the skills and you can do a quick website or you know someone who can help you, it, it's one of those things that shows that you're willing to go above and beyond. So yes, recruiters will obviously look at it and it, it, but not only that, it will show that initiative. And that's what companies want. They want the go-getters. They want the hunters. They want those people that are actually going to be worthwhile investing in. So, yeah, everything like that will definitely help. And I, could you, I, the more I talk around this point, the more you're starting to, or I'm starting to realize that um, sending a, sending a, a three-page CV or a 10-page CV or whatever the, the amount is, is it's almost becoming redundant, you know, like I'm sure as a, as a recruiter, you're receiving hundreds and hundreds of, of recruit uh, CVs a day, um, you know, so for you to have to go through that, you also want to be able to scan that document and sort of know exactly what it is you're looking for, or at, at least see someone taking the initiative and creating a different type of approach, right? 
Definitely, and you 100% right. So recruiters and hiring managers get CV 100, 200,000 CVs a day. It depends on the demand of that company. Wow. And we don't have the time to read a three, four, five page CV. There's a statistic out there that says a recruiter takes between three to five seconds to read your CV, and that is not a lie. When they're scanning your CV, it is as quick as three to five seconds. They're literally looking for those keywords that they want, and they will, <laughs> if, if it's not there and they can't find it, they move on. Wait a minute, three to five seconds? Three to five seconds to scan I mean, CV. So, so basically, so what you're saying is I should have a, a one-pager uh, CV, or I should have a little website that you can click on that I can uh, have a little video and showcase who I am and then maybe a small attachment below. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So making it as simple as possible, as easy to read as possible. So you get these people that, so yes, stand out. Make sure that you stand out. But don't go overboard by now creating a CV that is difficult to read. It must be easy on the eye. So don't go and put pink writing on a blue background. It's going to hurt hurt your eyes when you read it. It's really not going to grab a, um, a hiring manager or recruiter's attention if you think so. Something simple that catches, it tells us what you're about, what industry you're in, what um, jobs, where have you been working for the last five, six years, where have you been leaving, what's, um, or, or 10 years, depending how long your career is, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. What, what has been your career? Where have you been? Put that in a summary. You don't put, you need to put your on your first page, obviously. Um, you don't need to put your roles and responsibilities and all of that. Later on in your CV, jot that down. Put that as a little as a career summary, as what you have actually been doing, and elaborate. Put your roles because when you're in a um, job portal site, that is what recruiters will look at or um, hiring managers will look at. They'll find those keywords within your CV. But that first page, just where you are, what industry you're in, what your studies have been is more than enough to just get, make a, see, have a recruiter see that you're in the line with what they're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. So in terms of um, employment, so what, what is the best, me the best mes <laughs> method to look for employment? Um, and are there currently jobs out there? Um, yeah, one of the, and the, what I find really strange is you, you go on LinkedIn, you click on the job section in LinkedIn uh, and you, you sort of choose a country. And if you see the amount of jobs available on LinkedIn, you're kind of going, how the hell, where's the, Where's the like missing gap between our unemployment rate and the employment happening in the country, right? So, uh, so that's always a, like an interesting thing for me to 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 notice. But I mean, what are the best methods to look for employment? So yeah, I, and I agree with you. There are um, a lot of jobs out there if you go into LinkedIn and PNET and all of these places where you do look. Um, th there's tons of jobs. Uh, I think the problem in South Africa at the moment is a, a lot of the star or a lot of the top skills have left and immigrated. So we've got a bit of a brain drain and there's a lot of skilled jobs out there, not as many um, semi-skilled or entry-level jobs. And that's where I think most of our unemployment lies and that's where a bit of a problem is. But companies are doing what they can. Um, they were obviously scared with COVID. Um, and but they're doing what they can a lot of companies are bringing in internships and all of that but it is going to take a bit of a time to recover but not to sound too dismal we do have a lot of jobs out there and the best way to actually approach this job search is to make sure that you are in contact with the correct recruitment agency so like you said know your industry know what and do the research to find those recruitment um, industries and set up a phone call with them, send your CV, be proactive in your, in your email, say that I'm from this industry, I am looking for this salary, I'm available immediately, these are some of my achievements. If you have anything, please contact me. And follow up when you, if you've applied for a specific role, so you saw on a company's website that they were looking for a salesperson, 
and you apply directly for that sales role, be proactive. Apply three, four days later or the next week, send an email saying, just want to find out, have you seen my application? Am I a good um, person for this? And just follow up. It's one of the biggest keys in anything is if you want to succeed, you need to constantly follow up and make sure that you know what's going on. So, Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah and, and again, you know, on the point of uh, you, you as a recruitment agent, you're, you're getting thousands of emails or thousands of CVs. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not actively, if I don't keep into contact with, with Giselle um, every, other, every other week or at least once a week and go, hey, how are you doing? Um, just following up with you. Um, you, get, you, you know, as a recruiter, you get busy, I suppose. You know, like we all get busy. So, so much is coming in and so much is happening. You're kind of going, uh, I might have missed this. I might have intended to follow up with this and I didn't get to it and I forgot or... Um, because exactly. we and we get busy, right? So uh, there's also, mm -hmm. I think, uh, an unspoken expectation that you need to have as the person looking for work, right? So um, uh, I think you you need to have more of an active approach to applying and really being involved with it than a passive approach, right? Very much so. Very, very much so. If you're sitting back and hoping that the job will fall into your lap, that's not going to be the pro the but and also, that's not going to be the results. You're the pe person that is being active and the person that is following up and doing all of these things is the person that's going to get the job because it's, they also show more initiative, which is what companies want. Yeah, I, mean, I, I take for example, there's a new, um, I, I, I must I apologize, I might not get the name right, but I think it's called Video Ask, right? And mm -hmm. it's literally a little. Um, uh, it's a little application that you can now put it, you can insert a small little video into your email, right? And yes. every time you message someone, <laughs> it's a video that comes up and, and you can actually speak directly to the person, right? And I think that's the kind of stuff that people really need to, to pay attention to. Like, how do I differentiate myself from just other any other Joe Soap sending out the same kind of CV, looking at the same kind of position, um, how do I stand out as the differentiating factor when applying for this job, right? So, um, exactly. um, so in, in terms of how many hours a day you should be spending at looking for a job, um, is there a specific hours? Do you, do you kind of go, okay, cool, I do this once a week. I do this twice a week, uh, five times a day. How many times? Like, how does it, what is uh -huh. a good recommendation? Yeah, so it, it depends once again. If you unemployed and actively seeking employment, take your job search and make that your job. To get, stay in the habit of actually working. So get up at five o'clock, stop at four o'clock, or uh, get up at eight o'clock, sorry, <laughs> stop at four, five o'clock and work and look at jobs. You know, applying for a job is not a 30 second thing at all. It is a a timeless thing because you first need to read that job spec, make sure that you are applicable for that exact role. Also, you want to make sure that you have the time to apply. You're going to have a lot of companies that are putting up questionnaires and um, different loop, um, not not loopholes, hoops that you're going to have to jump through to help you stand out. So yeah. take the time, fill in those questionnaires, fill in, send an email to the right person, go and do some research and see if you can discover who that person is that's directly involved with recruiting that role. Because then you're directly in contact with the person that is hiring for that role. And if you've got that direct contact, you have a better chance because now that you've also shown that you're going that extra mile. So take that time if you're employed obviously you're not going to have that time so yeah. there i would say take two to three hours a day in the evening and just apply but tr the goal is the more you apply for the better your chances yeah absolutely um i remember actually going through this process once um a while back and uh, where you actually apply to stuff and um I mean, I also noticed how 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 user friendly LinkedIn is, um, but also when you're keeping it updated and, and you know busy with everything you're doing, it's also 
Uh, I think it's called apply apply on LinkedIn. I think apply on LinkedIn. Apply now. Yeah. Apply now, yeah. And you know uh, you can di directly do that from your LinkedIn account. So that that in itself can also become a bit of a an online CV approach. Um, and I think you know that could be a lot quicker than um, than having to send out like draw up your email. Uh, find the connect person and uh, go through, going through that process right there. LinkedIn can be used as a as a quick source of connection as well. Definitely, um, with a lot of the jobs on LinkedIn and Facebook, we just need to um, also keep in mind that these positions could be fake or scam positions. So that's also why you take that extra time when looking at your your jobs that you're busy um, applying to. Because if you don't sit and look to see, is this a real job? Is this not? Is this a fake? Is it a scam? You're going to end up on the sh with the short end of the stick. So yeah. those, yes, I agree with you, um, that apply now on LinkedIn is very easy. But you'll also see if you click on those apply nows, often it, gets, it redirects you to a new website where you have to fill in your your information or it takes you to the company's website where you have to do a little bit more digging to see how to actually apply it doesn't always take you to the exact link but then there's times where you apply directly through linkedin so it, yeah. it can work um but it can also be very tedious and that is the thing with job hunting and i think it's also why people get so discouraged is it's a very admin intensive and very tedious thing to do on a daily basis, which can be very irritating. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I, I mean, we've already covered some of this conversation, but like just in five, in a summary of five things, what are, what, what are perspect, uh, pr uh, prospective employers or recruiters looking for on a CV? What are the top five things? So top five things um, are just a summary of your experience. One page quick summary. They want to know your education. They want to know what your achievements have been. So if you have been awarded top engineer or top salesperson of 2017, put it on there. It's your place to brag. And they want to know your skills that are actually re relative to the job that you're applying for or to the industry you're in. And what your availability is uh, in terms of start dates, um, interviews, so just that those five things are key, but also things that I want to warn people not to put on their CV is their full address. So a, co a company needs to know more or less the area you're in. They don't need to know exactly where you live. Once you've got the job and you fill in your employment documents, there they can know where you, you live. But your full address is not needed. Your ID number is not needed on your um your cv a um a birthday or the year you're in or your age is great to see where uh, what they're looking at in your experience but your id number is not easy and then your banking details once again your banking details can be saved for your employment documents so that they know where to pay you but on your cv you don't need it and like we mentioned earlier there's a lot of jobs out there on all these free websites and LinkedIn and Facebook that are scams. So yeah. you don't want to send your CV to this person who's now scamming you and they've got all your precious information. You're setting yourself up to be put in a dangerous situation. So keep the, that information off your documents. Absolutely. So in terms of safety, how can you ensure your safety when you are in the job search? Like you're mentioning, you know, like don't put unnecessary information on there. Um, and uh, what else are we, or what else should we pay attention to? Because, uh, like you're saying, you know, there are some crazy people out there that, that <laughs> doing that some are crazy taking things. advantage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, yes, because of COVID, people are taking advantage of those that are desperate and in need. So, yeah, just watching out for those scams, trying trying to recognize them. There are many ways to recognize them. One, if you get an SMS randomly to say that you have been, um, you have an interview tomorrow at 12 o'clock, but you don't have any recollection of sending your CV to for that application or even know who this what this company does, yeah. don't go. It's a big red flag. 
and you could be putting yourself in a potentially dangerous position. If you are asked to pay for an interview or pay to send your CV, that is also a big red flag. Um, I think it's law, I stand under correction, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal for recruitment companies to charge you for your CV. Oh, wow. Because, <laughs> yeah, um, it's your, your a job search is a job search. You're out there, you're looking for something. Um, if, recruit, if companies use recruitment agencies, obviously there's a, an agreement there. But no, a, a candidate does not have to pay a recruitment company to have their CV on their database. You get that, you know it's a scam. Yeah. Um, and then if you do go for an interview that you feel comfortable going to, make sure that someone you know and someone that, you, that loves you knows where you are, knows what time this interview is, knows what time you should be done. And there's just that constant communication because you never know what could happen. So it's just making sure that if you do go, you have that backup so that people know what's going on as well. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. And I think sometimes people, you know, because they see an opportunity, they think, oh, yeah, you know, this is if I just pay 150 rand towards this or a thousand rand towards it, um, I might be, you know, up for a really great uh, uh, moment here or uh, opportunity. And that's not always the case, right? It's, uh, well, I've, I've never heard of a case like that, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, it's not the case at all. <laughs> but also, in terms of the, the um, uh, South African job market, um, how does Triple B, Double E affect your opportunities in the job market? And does it affect it at all? Yes, it does affect it. It depends on the company. So you'll have companies that are lower level BE. And as a result, they don't really have to stick to these BE regulations and they're able to hire as they want. But then you get companies that have to follow and are very um, in line with the BE. So yes, they do have to look at the disadvantaged, um, previously disadvantaged people first. Yeah. But in saying that, like I said earlier, there is a skill shortage in South Africa. So, yes, you might go for a role as a white male and according to the BE, triple BEE score, you are less likely to get the opportunity, but you might be the only one that has applied for the role that can actually do it. Mm -hmm. So then you could get the job. So, yes, it affects us and yes, it affects those on the market, but it also isn't that applicable especially in companies if i mean if a company is be great sometimes they actually like i've had clients turn to me and say i cannot employ another previously disadvantaged person you have to send me an Af a, a white person um where there's times where they say okay we need to work on our be school please can you only send me africans so it really depends on where the company is and how they are so yes it affects it but at the same time, it might also not affect it. Yeah. So, a, a last question that I have here, um, just for like intersect, in terms of remote working, because like we've all like a lot of people have moved into a remote working space. Mm -hmm. um, would it would you would you advise that if I'm looking for something at an international level that I that I also then connect with someone to an international level, or you know? Do I find someone in South Africa, someone I can go and speak to, someone I can have an interview with? Um, or is it again, is that a case of just finding the right match, researching? Like what is the best approach to, to finding an international position if, if, I, if I wanted to do that? Definitely, um, like we said earlier, just network. Connect with the person, connect with the people overseas. If you want to go overseas, then why not connect with those, those recruiters that are overseas? And there are so many out there. And many recruiters that do do um, cross-border and international placements. So you'll find them here in South Africa and they might work a lot in Africa. But you'll also find, um, I know someone who got an, a call from someone in France um, for a position here in South Africa. <laughs> wow. So you have recruiters, uh, remote work has become 
so easy these days, especially with the digital era. And I think COVID also showed a lot of companies that it's very possible. So yes, you could, and if you're really wanting to move overseas and you want to first start here and see if it's worth it and move over, then connect with the people, look what is out there, go on LinkedIn, see what positions are um, available in the country that you're looking at. Also research what job portals are in that country to yeah. see if it's worth it. Um, I know Glassdoor is very big for the Europeans and the Americans, not so much here in South Africa, but you get South African um, positions on there as well. But yeah, just do your research. It's the best way to actually, but yeah, research and connecting. Fantastic. Giselle, so um, if anybody would get, gets hold of you, because I know that you're going to come back uh, in the next couple of weeks, where we're going to be chatting about interviewing techniques. We're also going to be chatting about uh, employees' rights, the best way to resign, um, and, and a whole bunch of stuff still coming up. But if we want to get hold of you, what is the best way to do that? So the best way is to uh, see, send me an email. You can send it to info at recruitergy.co.za or go onto my website, which is www.recruitergy.co.za. And I'll be able to meet you there. Yeah, and guys, all of that information will be in the description box below. Thank you for joining me for the Lunchtime Careers segment today, where we're going to be showcasing recruitment, HR, career recruitment, uh, and a whole bunch of coaching and coaching platforms available around your career. Uh, Giselle, thanks for joining me, and I will chat to you soon. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great day. Cheers, Bye.